Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked for today, Tuesday, July 25th, 2017. I'm your host, John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. We're going to another case that is straight from the headlines. A lot of recent developments going on with this one. Uh, if you take a look at that picture, you might say, hey, John, that picture looks like uh, it's, it's from a long time ago. You would be absolutely right. This is a missing persons case that is going to have us reaching back to 1942. Let's get started. This is the case of disappearing parents. Today's case crack takes us to Switzerland in the canton of Valais. Valais is one of 26 cantons in Switzerland. A canton is like a state or province, basically a subdivided area of the country. Valais is situated in the southwestern part of the country and is most famous for the Matterhorn. It is also one of the driest and simultaneously wettest regions of the country. August 15th, 1942. Marceline and Francine Demolin were the parents of seven children, five sons and two daughters who lived in a village called Chandelin in the Valais Canton. Marceline was a shoemaker and Francine was a teacher, both near the age of 40. This would be the first time that Francine joined Marceline in his usual chore of going to feed the animals and milk the cows on their nearby farmland in Grilden. Francine was usually pregnant or recovering from pregnancy and usually couldn't climb in the difficult conditions of the glacier, according to one of her children. The parents planned on coming back later that evening. When they didn't show up, Monique, the eldest of the daughters, went to a friend's home at the end of the village to see if they were seen returning. When she learned that they hadn't, she knew something was very wrong. The parents would never be seen alive again. They had disappeared. A search would go on for over two and a half months, but eventually end with them not being found. The seven children, Maurice, Raphael, Candide, Eugene, Charles, Marceline, and Monique would live in the house alone for several weeks. Being the oldest daughter, Monique would handle all the cooking and cleaning by hand on top of keeping an eye on her younger siblings. Eventually, they were removed from the home and it was boarded up. The children weren't allowed to take anything to remember their parents or even each other by. The seven children had now officially become orphans. A priest helped place them with local families, which wasn't very hard due to the popularity of Marceline before his disappearance. The seven children still lived in the same area, but were not the close siblings that they once were. They would live most, and in some cases, all of their lives, never knowing what happened to their parents. Some of the children had tougher living conditions, being sent to work in fields, vineyards, and other jobs. The eldest brother went to work for a baker at the age of 13. Another went to work for a shoemaker. Two became stonemasons, and the last one worked as a chef. The children didn't have many opportunities to see each other, but every August 15th, some of them would get together and climb that glacier, praying for answers to where their parents were. We spent our lives searching for them relentlessly, said youngest daughter Marceline. She climbed the, gl the glacier at least three times in her life, each time looking for her missing parents. After a heart attack and a stroke, she was no longer able to make the pilgrimage. She was only four years old when her parents disappeared. As the decades went on, no answers seemed to come. Some of the siblings eventually passed away. Then, just a few weeks ago, in mid-July of 2017, a ski lift technician was doing a routine inspection tour for the Swiss Adventure Resort Glacier 3000. He was working above the resort at approximately 8,600 feet and saw what he initially thought was a collection of black rocks. He made his way over to them and found that they were actually two bodies sticking out of the ice. They were mummified and appeared to be wearing very outdated clothing. 
We think they may have fallen into a crevasse where they stayed for decades, commented another resort employee. They theorized that a fast moving snowstorm might have covered them up, making it impossible to see them. The bodies were found lying close to each other with backpacks, a bottle, a book, a watch, and most importantly, identification papers. The papers stated that they were Marceline and Francine. DNA tests were run, and just last week it was confirmed that they are indeed the missing parents. Was this case cracked by climate change? According to Swiss police, that's exactly what happened. The glacier has been shrinking over the years and had melted to the point of the bodies finally being exposed to the surface. The fact that this area has both exceedingly dry and very rapidly cold weather created the perfect situation for their corpses to become mummified. The ice in their bodies didn't have a chance to turn to water, instead vaporizing when the dry season would kick in. That inhibited the work of bacteria and fungi that would usually aid in decomposition and ultimately preserved them for nearly 75 years. Their youngest daughter, Marceline, now 79 years old, says, I can say that after 75 years of waiting, this news gives me a deep sense of calm. Marceline and her sister Monique, who is now 86 years old, are the only two of the seven children who are still alive. For the funeral, I will not put on black. I think white will be more appropriate. It represents hope which I have never lost, stated Marceline. A funeral service for her parents was held this past Saturday, July 22nd, 2017. Both surviving daughters were there together. Both of them were wearing white. Swiss police believe climate change is giving them an opportunity to solve some of these old missing persons cases. They note a higher than average trend of climbers' bodies being discovered over the past few decades, including the remains of two Japanese climbers who went missing on an excursion to the Matterhorn Mountain in 1970, found in September of 2016, uh, as well as the body of a German skier who disappeared in 1964, who was also found last year. 280 people from that area have disappeared since 1926, so there are many more cases to be cracked by these types of discoveries. If the Swiss police are correct, we might be seeing one of the few positive aspects of climate change. Case cracked. Um, wow, I just I can't believe a case would be cracked after 75 years, and I'm just happy that at least two of the children were still alive to have the benefit of these remains being found and to put these remains properly to rest. It's really unfortunate to me that this family got so broken up when the parents went missing, but I completely understand, it, I mean, the task of trying to get a family to adopt seven children. Um, that was probably a very steep and maybe unmanageable thing. So uh, I kind of understand it. And at least there was families willing to help pitch in. Like I said, the father had this great reputation in the community. So that really seemed to help get the children taken care of. It's just unfortunate that they couldn't really um, keep their that group of siblings um, together as a tight family unit. But at least here, ultimately, in the end, the two daughters were able to once again be together and help put their parents to rest in what looks like a very beautiful ceremony. I know Marceline spoke at the ceremony. Um, I think I heard that Monique participated in it. I don't know if she also gave a speech of some kind, but I do have some photos from it here for you to see. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Case Cracked. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'll see you here tomorrow, right back on the Lord and Arts channel.